Well, hello there. I just want to talk about coincidences. Uh, I have two stories to tell. One is about the Costa Concordia, but I'll, I'll come to that later. And the other one was a, an oil tanker that I was on when I'd first finished my cadetship. Uh, I flew out to uh, Chile to join the ship there, so I went over the Andes. And of course, when you fly over the Andes, it's a sudden great drop. But anyway, this ship, we used to call into a port. Uh, I think it might have been San Vicente or something like that, um, or Valparaiso. Uh, I can't remember the exact port now, because this is getting on for 38 years ago now. Uh, this was uh, 37 years ago. <laughs> anyway, whenever we went into this particular port, the ship's boiler would fail. Yeah, every single time that we went in, the boiler would fail, and every time we went out, the boiler failed. It didn't happen anywhere else. It was just this one particular port on the Chilean coast. So was that coincidental or was that outside factors? Uh, it wouldn't have been a cyber attack back then because you just didn't have the technology. Didn't even have mobile phones back then. Uh, anyway, so getting on to the next one, the Costa Concordia, the coincidence there, it saved quite a few people's lives. Um, but first of all, we have to give some, uh, some stories about passenger ships. Now, I was working for Carnival Cruises at the time uh, of the Costa Concordia accident, and then a job came up as chief engineer on the recovery barge. There was a, a huge, great accommodation barge, um, and I went out there as chief engineer with all the workers, and uh, we had um, cement mixers and all that kind of stuff. Uh, for the recovery of the Costa Concordia. Now, when I got out there, it was laying on its side, broken. And uh, a few weeks later, it was righted, and uh, we then left. But what you have to know about passenger ships is, from the bottom of the ship, you've got these, what they call, double-bottom tanks, where you keep your fuel and your ballast water. Above that, you'd have the engine room compartments. Now, the engine room compartment on a passenger ship is great long. It runs the whole length of the ship. Now, it's divided up into watertight sections. So you may have, I, I can't remember, the, you, you know, but you might have 12 sections on a ship that will be watertight. But because you've only got one point of entry on a passenger ship to bring in your supplies and your spare parts for the main engine and things like this, the, the whole of the bottom of the, the uh, machinery space, it can be opened up with the watertight doors. Every compartment has a watertight door uh, that runs along it. And of course, there's not much height on a, on a passenger ship for big engines. So that's why you have small diesel engines uh, that run all the time. So they're diesel electric on a passenger ship. Uh, anyway, so then the deck above that is the crew deck where the... Uh, crew um, rec rooms and restaurants maybe and some of the crew uh, accommodation then you get further up and you you probably get some of the officers accommodation and uh, cabins there and then you start getting into the the passenger accommodation uh, which you you're not really allowed in unless you're dressed in full uniform um, but anyway I'm beside the point so bearing in mind that the that the engine compartment covers the whole length of the ship from the from the steering gear all the way up forward to the bow thruster. Now, this Costa Concordia went to visit an island. The, the captain had a friend who lived on that island and he wanted to wave hello. <clears throat> but the captain's friend wasn't there. So that was a wasted journey. But as he got too close to the island, the Costa Concordia struck a rock. Now this rock ripped a huge great hole in the ship now they don't do it now but at the time all the watertight doors in the engine compartment were fully open that means that the, when the water started flooding in it started to flood all of the engine room compartments not just the one compartment that had the the split in this in the side of the of the ship open to the sea but the entire length of the ship was now being flooded uh, and of course the watertight doors are 
manu can be manually and they can be automatically operated just by pressing one button all the doors close and it's not like you see on the movies they don't close that fast they're quite slow so as you can imagine the water would have been pouring into that ship uh, at, at a, at hundreds of tons of an hour of seawater flooding in when the ship hit the rock it started to list over to port this is because the wind was blowing on the starboard side or should I say the right hand side of the ship the ship the wind was blowing on the right hand side pushing it over to the left or the port side now lucky coincidence that saved many lives was the fact that the rudder had stuck over giving it a right rudder command or or a starboard rudder command now at the time as the ship was started to list over so far all the lifeboats on the right hand side of the boat were unable to be lowered simply because they were now resting on the side of the ship and they just wouldn't slide down that side of the ship anyway so the lucky coincidence was at the time was that because the rudder had stuck over hard over to give you a right rudder command or or a starboard rudder command the ship actually turned it did a complete u-turn and came back which meant that the wind was now on the other side of the boat and caused the boat to come upright as the boat came upright of course those life rafts or life boats that were stuck on that side of the ship were now free to be lowered into the water and allow a few more passengers to escape so <laughs> That was one lucky coincidence that, or a series of coincidences that allowed the ship to rescue more people than were, that well, it would have been otherwise if the, the rudder hadn't have stuck over, if the wind hadn't blown the ship around, uh, or blown the ship upright, should I say. Uh, so yeah, it's a very, very lucky coincidence. Uh, and one of the, uh, the other, funny little story that goes with the Costa Concordia is that one of the residents on the island was so keen to get involved in the compensation he actually ran down the side of the, of the hill uh, to get in the water so that he could pretend to be a passenger on the Costa Concordia but as he was running down the side of this hope he slipped and fell and broke his leg so he didn't actually get out to the Costa Concordia to uh, to pretend to be a, a passenger but they were lucky that when the ship came to rest it rested on um the the shore it was two pinnacles like this of, of the uh, of the seabed caused the boat to rest in two par parts so the boat was rested in two parts like this on its side and uh, when i was there you could see that the ship had been had uh, had its back broken because you could see the ship flexing like this as the waves were coming in um, and as a seafarer seeing a ship in that state was uh, very eerie as well and of course when we had some bad weather some more of the furniture came floating out of the boat um, one one thing I do remember was a table um, sorry a bedside cabinet with a light stuck on top of it floating past uh, but it's very very eerie and of course many people did lose their lives on that particular boat which was very very unfortunate just so that the captain could wave hello to his friends but yes coincidences do happen at sea they happen all the time but we don't often hear about it because it's not newsworthy these things happen and the the, the mainstream media don't want to know because it's not newsworthy um, but as we're finding out with the Dali uh, the uh, the attention is now being turned towards shipping at the moment for a couple of months anyway until until the wreckage of the Dali is uh, is removed anyway so that's about it then that's my little story of coincidences um, there's many more <laughs> that, that, that I have but uh, we'll leave that for another day okay see you later bye then